Hello, you're watching Critique Quest and my analysis come review of Bloober Team's Layers of Fear 2, where I will be talking about what worked and what didn't, maybe even simultaneously, because it's the games that have a bit of both that are truly the most intriguing. In this first-person horror game set aboard an ocean liner, you play a nameless Hollywood star who, at the behest of a mysterious director, must build the lead character for his final masterpiece, but the past has a way of worming into the present. Will the actor find himself and lose the character, or find the character and lose himself? In this conceptual game, there are many answers. Some parts are not to be played. Some parts. Bloober Team are masters of the slow reveal teasing out roots through gradual manipulation of levels. And much like the previous game, Layers of Fear 2 is all about narrow, linear areas tightly controlled by the designers. It's an approach that has attracted some criticism, but it's this absolute control that allows for such shocking transformations. Where the last two games concentrated on alterations far larger in scope, Layers of Fear 2 hones in on the little details. One instance involves a kitchen, where doorways appear and reappear in what feels like the blink of an eye. In another scenario, where you find yourself tailing someone, a couple of quick turns close large interconnecting gaps, in effect teleporting you through the ship. A subtler example can be seen in an old house, where you suddenly stand much shorter on your surroundings. Features of the house are generally presented in a skewed perspective, implying a wonky comprehension. Of course, none of these things are as visually impressive as, say, a vanishing wall or a bookcase with no end, but visual tricks have been tweaked in Layers of Fear 2 to understated effect. The devil is in the details, as they say. And a brand new detail of note comes in the form of New Game Plus, which has been added for the first time, not only in the series, but in any of Bloober Team's titles, making it easier to go back and replay acts. Video games with stories like this need to promote a second or third playthrough, and Layers of Fear 2 does just that with this edition. It doesn't just service the needs of the completionists among us, but offers a much needed opportunity to replay and reassess. And Layers of Fear 2's story requires a keen eye to really grasp what on earth it's all about. It doesn't seem to want to tell a straightforward story so much as take the time to explore what brought the actor, and others, to said story. Layers of Fear 2 shares a lot more in common with Observer in that regard. The game similarly revolves around an interactive diorama of narrative threads, crashing together in one setting. But it's still very much like the first game, in that it's all about capital A art. In this case, the pursuit of character through method. This time around, however, it uses many voices to explore this. In fact, this indirect sequel takes a much more collaborative view of creativity. The actor's success or failure directly affects the directors, his own agents too, I suppose. Then we have the dual protagonists, siblings Lily and James, and the lasting influence their experience has in adopting imaginary identities. The narrative includes all the people that have made, and continue to make, the creative wheels turn. It's a far more complex approach in contrast to the first game, which centered solely on the painter, only extending to another's perspective through DLC. I was once told that insanity runs in my family. It's time to make it stop. Where the titular layers in the first game seem to reflect the morphing sets, the layers of this game are more akin to doorways into frames of mind, rather than simply tie the story together in a choice ending, which the game also has, mind you, it's as much about peering through the keyholes as you explore. The ways in which the past and present collide is particularly startling as a result. For example, lines drawn in chalk on the floor allude to Lily and James's swashbuckling adventure, but ultimately reveal themselves to be stage directions, left for you by the director. The protagonist's memories colour the way they interpret the present moment. The trouble with opening so many veins, of course, is that things are bound to get messy. And this much is true for Layers of Fear 2, especially in later acts. There are five chapters in total, each lasting an hour or so each. A decent length, though much longer than its predecessor. And where the first few acts appear to plot a clear roadmap, things become much looser and chaotic by the end. 
it's clear that something solid was needed to anchor the story, no pun intended, to bring all these disparate themes home. Now, Lily and James's story serve that function for most of the game, and their journey is beautifully handled. I would go so far as to say it counts as one of the most compelling sibling stories and games. Overall, though, the story is very far-reaching, touching upon many ideas. Stage and film culture, identity, method acting, fame, family, and fear, just to name a few. And where Observer held it together through Detective Lazarski's central mission, and Layers of Fear by merely limiting perspective, Layers of Fear 2 tends to succumb to a lack of focus. That said, the game still manages to offer a somewhat solid character payoff in spite of it. It's also worth mentioning that it seems Bloober Team might be building a supernatural mythos behind the Layers games. Time will tell if this hunch is correct or not, and we will see if this culminates into something interesting further on down the line. But to summarise, the story is psychologically ambitious, if not a little too loose in its assembly. Where it does excel, however, its effectiveness owes quite a bit to the game's visuals and how they're used to manifest its many themes. Set on a ship, the game's levels are gorgeously realised. The ship feels like a gilded prison. That it shifts in and out of time and memory further demonstrates a solid grasp of environmental storytelling. Colour is manipulated to cement its ideas. Scenes influenced by the director, for example, are framed in black and white, as if you just stepped into an old motion picture. While the childhood home in Bloody Roots is tinged in sepia, green plays a prominent role later in this chapter too. Where roots mean brown earth, green reflects overgrowth, a nice visual representation of underground and above ground. Home versus escape. In another example, red is emphasised, as the actor attempts to really bite into the meat of the character. It's very deliberate, and communicates the actor's journey clearly, as you pace the halls of the sprawling ship. Now, this great use of vivid colour is forfeited somewhat, on large portions of the game presented in aforementioned black and white. Though stylistically it brings to mind noir and impressionism, and certainly does mimic these genres well, it also tends to flatten backdrops. Where levels in colour, much like Technicolor film, brings the setting to life, even without a natural source of light, black and white film grain does the opposite. It does offer clear narrative distinction, but areas of high contrast are generally far more striking. Layers of Fear 2 also makes use of visual references to film, from The Village of the Damned, Psycho and The Shining, to Seven, Metropolis, the Silence of the Lambs, the 2006 remake of The Hills Have Eyes, and many, many more. Cinephiles have plenty to spot. That said, dates on newspaper articles are conspicuously missing. And though it doesn't take too much to guess that the present time period in which the game is set, roughly covering the golden age of Hollywood, it's a period that most certainly doesn't reach the early 2000s. All that said, these references were likely added for the player's benefit. Without context, then, given by the player, these references aren't particularly consistent, internally or narratively. And contrary to these, posters subtly represented cinematic classics in which the actor could feasibly have starred. There's an ode to The Wizard of Oz through A Wondrous Voyage, for example, or Todd Browning's Dracula in The Night Fiend. These references felt much more appropriate, although arguably less meta, even less fun. Disregarding small gripes and nitpicks, Blooper Team nevertheless continue to create a strong sense of place through atmosphere, character, and level design. They're also proving very strong in another avenue, casting. Layers of Fear 2 counts as Blooper Team's second game to feature a well-known actor, perfectly fit for their role, and further intensifying the game's exceptional ambience, perhaps even elevating it. Rutger Hauer's vocal eccentricity, as an example, complemented the strange world of Observer. How's the dream eater treating you? Well, I'm not a vegetable yet. In Layers of Fear 2, it's the prolific actor Tony Todd, who's been cast as the mysterious director, narrating the journey of method acting through philosophy and observation. 
Now, where he has acted in many an animated film, it's great to hear him lend his vocal talent to a video game. Much like his iconic turn in the 92 classic Candyman, his voice is as hypnotic and threatening as it is inviting. A simple task and the execution truthful. His inclusion is made all the more impactful, considering it was the result of a correspondingly method approach to Candyman, which openly utilised hypnotism on Todd's co-star, Virginia Madsen, that helped cement him as one of the great horror boogeymen, akin to a contemporary Dracula. Not to undermine the performances behind the game's other central characters, such as the agent, the mysterious anonymous slide projector man, not his real name, obviously, the father, and the two central protagonists, Lily and James. All were impressive. The mysterious anonymous slide projector man is effortlessly engaging during his chapter opening monologues. Where reason dare not go, instinct prevails. The children, however, were standout. From moment one, their performances draw you into their terrifying game of pretend. It helps that the writing in this area is particularly strong, handling the sibling dynamic with maturity and complexity, but it was only strengthened by the performances of these young actors. Lily's tribute to her brother's creativity was a standout for me. My brother, the silent dreamer. As too were James's innermost worries voiced aloud. It's like I was never there. This marks their first video game voice credit on both counts, which is truly impressive. Now, outside of the voice work, Layers of Fear 2 relies very heavily on its sound. It is recommended that the game be played with a pair of headphones for maximum effect, and I would echo that sentiment. Though the game doesn't utilise sound to the same ends as, say, Ninja Theory's Hellblade, which expressed the emotional psychology of a character through it, this is a journey deep into darkness. Layers of Fear 2 makes a solid case for simple yet imaginative use of audio. Quite often it reflects the ever-changing level design, but also acts as a thematic backdrop to a character or a period in time. In one instance, as James and Lily's father, a war veteran, speaks, music evokes the drone of planes overhead. You'll hear the awkward shifting of an audience blend with the cracking of bones in another unsettling prompt. The game's music is executed just as well. Arcadius Rakowski, the composer for both Observer and Layers of Fear, returns to lend his talents to Layers of Fear 2 and has created a much more well-rounded soundtrack by comparison. Where his work on Layers of Fear hinged upon a story-driven melody with the odd spattering of horror ambience. An observer was fundamentally built upon technological soundscapes. Layers of Fear 2 is a nice blend of ambience and emotion. It spans dread, warmth, sadness, remembrance and adventure. It feels as though Rakowski is experimenting with the soundtrack much like the developers too are exploring. Tracks might reference a movie genre one minute before building something entirely new. There are a lot of things on display, heavy orchestra, sparse rhythms, choruses, or lone voices trailing in from nowhere. Taken as a whole, the soundtrack has an easy listening quality to it, even when it ramps up to more menacing heights. And there is plenty of menace in the game. Gameplay, too, and is often communicated through jump scares, as one might expect from this developer. Throughout their gameography, Bloober Team appear very comfortable with jump scares, and though similar techniques are utilised in Layers of Fear 2, it seeks to ground some of these in something resembling reality or an honest-to-goodness explanation. The game hints at the director's involvement through codex entries in the form of sales receipts for a coffin-like structure, mannequins, dogs. It implies that the director has constructed various hoops for the actor to jump through, as a result, these frights feel less like a prompt on behalf of the designers to startle the player, and more like a method, no pun intended, devised by the director to push the actor into developing his character. This explanation isn't true for all of the game's jump scares, and whether or not this change makes these moments any more or less scary is, I suppose, subjective. 
it counts as a subtle evolution of a staple nonetheless, and one that functions well within the confines of the game's story. A narrative improvement, more so than in play. An aspect of gameplay that definitely struggles involves enemy encounters, which never quite add the pressure it aims to. Observer had a similar problem, albeit less present than the monster in Observer's final hours. Several levels in Layers of Fear 2 are punctuated by an enemy chase. In some areas, you close doors to slow its approach. In others, simply running as fast as you can does the trick. Easy enough on the surface, but in such tight quarters, keeping one step ahead of a swift enemy is not tense, but fiddly and frustrating. There's often only a fraction of a second's difference between getting caught and escape, and should you die, the flow of the game is well and truly broken, along with any suspense that might have been building. To counter this, you could choose the safe mode option at the start of the game, where the monster appears but can't kill you. It helps during a second run of the game to scoop up any extras you may have missed, but this setting strips the meaning from the monster. <laughs> what is that thing? I thought I knew, but... Now I'm not sure. The concept behind the enemy holds emotional and thematic weight that permeates the game at large. Take that risk away and you cripple those concepts. Now, the idea of a formless pursuer in close quarters is a thrilling one. Still, it just isn't as functional in implementation. Now, this isn't an area in which Bloober Team have excelled previously, yet you can clearly see a distillation of what was started, namely in Observer, here. And in the end, I could say the same for almost all elements in the game. Core features that we've come to expect from Bloober Team titles have been moderately adjusted in Layers of Fear 2. Whether it's an intimate approach to level transformations, delving into a more ambitious psychological storyline, experimenting with binaural sound, or playing with the idea of a mythical universe, Layers of Fear 2 keeps the creative momentum and potential going. A fittingly layered strategy to an equally layered experience. We're out on the edge of the world, Mr. Hardy. Nothing is as it seems. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave your thoughts on Layers of Fear 2, Bloober Team, or horror games in general in the comment section below. Now, without the people you see on screen right now, this video wouldn't have been made possible, so I'd like to say a massive thank you to those of you who are generously supporting me on Patreon. I'd like to make a special mention of Bryson Brody, Christopher Cotton, Gabriel Sales, Jacob White, Jessica Costello, Marlon, Michael Rivera, and Wraith. Thank you for the invaluable support and encouragement. And with that, I will say goodbye, and I'll see you again soon in my next video.